What's going on, everybody? My name is Zell Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. And today we're going to react to another ep video from The Rubber. And like I said at the end of the last episode, we're going to react to SCP-105. And now I know her name. It's Iris. Um, I've heard a bunch about this SCP. I just never looked into what she was. Because I've heard about... Mainly I heard about her from when she was on Cable's... Uh, MTF team. Cable is SCP-076-2, if, if I remember correctly. So if you guys have never seen that video, I'll go check it out on the Rubbers channel. Because that's, that's the only place where I know where SCP-105 is from. That I actually have seen her from. And ha had a video with her in it. I know that the SCP explained already made a video on iris but i have not watched it yet because i wanted to watch a video of what she is and what anomalous ability she has first before going right and directly into that video and that's kind of the plan that i'm going to be doing from now on with that channel i'm going to react into videos from other channels to explain what the scp is and then i'm going to go right over to their channel and watch the, the video they made of that scp that way i don't get confused because I've, I've been doing that for a while reacting to their channel and not understanding what the SCPs are because I'm going in completely blind. But now if I'm watching these videos from Rubber, Dr. Bob, and SCP Explained Stories, the other SCP channel I also react to, I've been watching videos from them that explain what the SCPs are so that gives me a much better understanding who they are before I go over and react to those channels. So I will be reacting to the video that, that they made of Iris as well, but I'm going to react to this one first, and then I'm going to go over and watch that one, because that way I have an understanding of what she is. So I'm sorry that took a long time to explain, but I just wanted to say that and get it over with. But um, now you guys know. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and react to this video right now in three, two, one, go. Viewer discretion is advised. Viewer discretion is advised. She opened the bottle and shook a huge pile of capsules into her hand. My name is Iris Thompson. Minutes later, her stomach <laughs> churned in rebellion. Her pulse quickened. Hello, everybody. I'm the Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation oh, safe. safe Literally, what I was talking about in the last episode, where I don't know that many safe SCPs. Here is one right here. S object SCP-105. Drink. SCP-105, formerly known as Iris Thompson is a female human of European descent, but born in Phoenix, Arizona. She is petite with long blonde hair and blue eyes. SCP-105-B is a Polaroid one-step express camera manufactured in 1982. When 105 holds a photograph taken by 105-B, the photograph changes from a still image to that of a real-time image. Oh. 105 possessed the capability to reach through the photograph and manipulate objects within reach of the original point at which the photograph was taken. 105B and... Okay, that's very different than anything I've seen so far. Can she actually pull... Is that Luna? Speaking of cats, hold on one second. Mm. Speaking of cats, here's Luna coming into the room. You'd be good. <sighs> I knew I heard a meow, but I wasn't sure whether or not it was from the from the video or if it was from her. And now she's in the room, so now we have a cat in the, cat in the background, and I don't know if she's gonna stay or not, whether or not. We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> and the photographs it produces do not possess any unusual properties when operated by any other individual. So she's the only one that can manipulate it. 105 had Luna's demonstrated a limited desk. ability to manipulate objects through other photographs, but can only achieve fine control using photographs taken through 105B. Oh. 105 was brought to the Foundation's attention shortly after the murder of her boyfriend. 105 what? claimed to have been on the phone with him at the time of his murder prompting her to hurry to his side. However, telephone records did not support or align with her story. With that, she became the primary suspect in his murder. 105 informed her lawyer that she had, in fact, witnessed the murder through a photograph she had taken with her boyfriend several days prior. The attorney in question disregarded the story and recommended that the subject plead guilty. 
105 wow. refused to do so and subsequently told her story in court, offering to demonstrate her ability. This led to her being immediately contained by the Foundation. 105 was the second humanoid SCP recruited to Mobile Task Force Omega-7 under yeah, the Pandora because he brought it back up for his box initiative. Unlike Team Abel, associated with SCP-076-2, which was assigned to strike and capture operations, Team Iris had the primary mission of reconnaissance and intelligence. God. You can see now why I don't record a lot of videos every single time a video comes out. You guys can see why now. Because the cats keep, my cat keeps bothering me. I'm going to go back 15 seconds so that way I can hear that again. Seven, under the Pandora's Box Initiative. Unlike Team Abel, associated with SCP-076-2, which was assigned to strike and capture operations, Team Iris had the primary mission of reconnaissance and intelligence gathering. Okay. Team Iris carried out over 20 missions in cooperation with the Bow Commission, swiftly and without incident. Wow. The first disciplinary incident involving 105 involved the escalation of Team Iris missions from reconnaissance to wet work. Wet work. 105 violently opposed the use of her abilities to carry out assassinations, oh. even after members of the Bow Commission repeatedly attempted to secure her cooperation. During these events, 105 became emotionally distressed and attempted to deceive Foundation personnel into believing that her anomalous traits mm -hmm. had disappeared. A Foundation professor submitted a report recommending that 105 be reclassified as neutralized. In addition, the report recommended that 105 should undergo amnestic treatment and be released to the public with regular monitoring. However, the recommendation was denied. Following this, all Mobile Task Force Omega-7 teams were disbanded. Oh, wow. And 105 was implanted with a tracking device. 105 was housed at Site 17, while 105B was contained in a locked safe deposit box at Site 19's high-value item storage facility. It had been 68 days since the guard posted to her door. Now was the time. She studied the picture closely. She remembered it as a photograph of Dr. Whitman and an unnamed secretary lost to time and staffing reorganization, drunk in the manner that office workers always seem to reserve for Christmas parties. She recalled the bright yellow Level 3 staff only sign that adorned many rooms in the facility, partially obscured by the Happy Holidays sign. Above oh. this sign was a stained air vent. Without breathing, she looked at the photograph. It now featured only a door in a brightly lit corridor. No sign of Dr. Whitman, and the insensate secretary remained. Only the entrance to the Site 17 Pharmacological Dispensary. She smiled. Jackpot. What's she 105 up to? gingerly moved her hand into the photograph. As she neared the door's electronic keypad, she recited the mnemonic that she'd kept in her head for two months after overhearing a chance conversation in passing between two security techs. Four oh. years in Site 17. She touched four on the keypad. Fifteen dead in Operation Milk Run. She entered a one and a five. Oh. One plus zero plus five is six. She entered a six. The year of what mom and after? dad's wedding. She entered an eight and a seven. Attempt number... Upon entering the three, a green light flashed above the door handle and the oh, wow, deadbolt the sharply clicked open. Appears in the hallway. 105 pushed open the door. Barely distinct now, shelves laden with bottles, boxes, and plastic bags beckoned. Her elbow was now past the photograph's threshold, and she reached as far as she dared into the pharmacy. She picked up a plastic bottle that had 200 capsules of orphanodrine. Of orphanodrine. She opened the bottle and shook a huge pile of capsules into her hand. She noticed the designation on her fluorescent yellow tracking wristband, SCP-105. She closed her hand around the pills. My name is Iris Thompson. Minutes later, her stomach churned in rebellion. Her pulse quickened. My name is Iris Thompson. The bottle Whoa. fell from her grasp, and suddenly the cement floor rose to meet her, silently and without feeling. She passed out on the floor. 
for a moment, she thought her suicide attempt was a success. Oh. She awoke in a plush, high-backed chair. As her eyes adjusted to the dim light in the room, she noticed a grand piano in the far corner behind her. She uncomprehendingly took in her elegant surroundings, putting her hands to her face as if to reassure herself she still existed. Please, there's no need to get up just yet. Iris was startled by the voice behind her. As she turned, she saw an older, heavyset man with a Wait, mop of that, gray it's hair and a <laughs> it's SCP-343. What is he doing here? Bushy white beard. He wore an orange jumpsuit, much the same as hers. The customary ID number stenciled over the heart read SCP-343. Something's not right. I I'm in here, but I get the feeling I'm still in Site 17. Are you that guy that the guards talk about? The one everyone wants to go visit? If you're him, I can't understand why you didn't just pop me into your cell to talk to me earlier. Dale scratched his beard. It's not quite as simple as that. I perceive many things, Iris. What appears to the staff here as parlor tricks and miracles is merely movement in other forms. Hmm. She poured herself a glass of water. What, like other dimensions? Dale pulled a slightly sour-looking face. I dislike that term. It makes me sound like a horrible Flash Gordon villain. <laughs> but yes, I move in worlds stacked on top of this one. As do you. Though you don't know that yet. She considered Dale carefully. What don't I know yet? The old man leaned closer. You poor girl. Many things. The good news is that you are no mere curiosity with a penchant for photography. That parlor trick is just that, a trick. Dale turned back towards her. Have you ever considered that looking at pictures was simply a focal point? Perhaps it was just a way to wrap your mind around something that, in your world, should not be? She opened her mouth to answer. No, surely not. You are something far more otherworldly and dangerous than they suspect. The potential you have to wreak changes on the realms around you is far in excess of what could be expected by man or God. However, your mind, or what will become of your mind, or what's left of it, is ill-suited to such circumstances. Whatever fills this wonderful little facility with invisible treasures seems to have seen fit to play a particularly complex joke on you. What I'm kind of lost as to what 343 is trying to do with 105. I just wanted to say that because I'm actually really confused. That's why I'm not talking. Whatever you started out as, you are far less human than they suspect. Than you, yourself, suspect. Her face turned red. Her hands balled up into fists. That's not what it's like. Everyone suspects, but I'm the only one who really knows. And none of you ever ask me. They rather run their tests, write their reports, and then go home like it doesn't matter. Tears came to her eyes as she turned to face the old man. Why am I here with you, anyway? I never did anything to anyone. I even helped them with that psycho with the tattoos. Less than human, you don't know me. She buried her face in her hands, ashamed and once again unable to control the situation. I'm not like the rest of you. I can choose to be more than that. Dell pulled himself up to his full height. Your presence here has inspired a need for forgiveness that even hard people like the Foundation require. Due to what you are, there was little danger of you fully accomplishing what you set out to do. But you've managed to really hurt yourself this time. You've triggered something. What you have done is set events in motion far more than a single death could have accomplished. You, the Foundation, and even I are all about to be freed from the illusion of control that shackles each and every... A beeping sound came from the old man's wrist. He checked his Casio digital watch. Ah, my manners. Time's up. With that, he snapped his fingers. And in an instant, Iris awoke in a hospital bed. Fortunately, oh, wow. her suicide attempt had been a failure. Because of the security risk she represents and lack of current utility, SCP-105 is no longer allowed access to SCP-105-B.
Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talk. So what was 343 trying to do? Convince her that she wasn't human anymore and that she was something else entirely? That was a bit confusing, not gonna lie. Cause I, I didn't understand what he was trying to say throughout that entire time. It was a bit confusing. But yeah, from aside from all of that, that's that this is a very different SCP than what I've heard that what I've seen so far. But um Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. Sorry that it was very quiet. I was just really into it and and trying to figure out what he was talking about, them, trying to explain to her that whole time. But now I know what I know what SCP-105 is. So, yeah, hopefully you guys you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. Like, subscribe, and all stuff, guys. And I will talk to you later. Bye.